Yeah, hello, scrappers. Uh, today I thought I'd uh, scrap out this dryer. Haven't done a video of one for a while. First thing I usually do is pop these knobs off. Sometimes they can be kind of tough. That one broke off. Get a little Phillips screw there. We've got a couple quarter inch bolts here on the back. But with the magnets in, we're getting pretty wore out. I'm gonna have to get some replacements. Probably from this impact we're wearing them out. Got a plate here. I got a couple of Phillips back here with a uh, clamp where the cord goes in. I'll go ahead and loosen them up on back here. Okay, let me see. Yeah, I'm glad the weather kind of cooled off. Been waiting for fall. May have to get the hammer on that. Let me get the head piece came off. Looks like we've got a couple Phillips screws right down there in the bottom. Should come out a little bit easier now. There we go. Bitty circuit board. Yeah, 
Yeah, the yard's like all these clips cut off, all the ends. Zip tie right there we can cut. Usually what I try to do is cut all these wires here just before they go down and inside. I do have a couple the red and a, a couple red here. There should be a black that's pretty thick. I try to hang on to the thicker ones for stripping. Got a little bitty motor here. It's got the timer. It's got a lot of copper, maybe some silver in there. I do a dry art, I, I take it all the way down to conserve space on the trailer. So if it doesn't all come apart, I'll air chisel down the corners. This piece here is aluminum. And we got some shred here. Now some of these just have a little tab that you can pull up, It'll cut off, pull up, then it twists and it comes out. Same thing here. This one's got one right there. Gonna push it through from the back side. So if you want to take any of this stuff off. timers I just throw a bunch of them into a barrel and then one of these days I'll get back to work on them. I'm going to set this aside for right now so I can get the sticker wires out later. Okay. Okay. I pulled all the screws out. I was wondering why they wouldn't come off. We got two uh, quarter inch bolts in there. Three. Okay. These are quarter inch here too. Usually these are a little bigger here. I say about dryers sometimes they're loaded with change. Okay, sometimes we experiment. taken that off without having to pull that off. You never know. Thank you. 
holding this up. Show you guys what we got left going on here. So it's like that long tube, your uh, heating element. So I think I'm just about to a point now to I'm gonna have to air chisel down the corners. Sometimes I'll right here I'll take a angle grinder and cut those. So and a lot of times what I like to do at this point try to get up here and get a hold of this belt that goes around the drum. Cut it. these drums I just <laughs> stockpile them until springtime and then uh, <clears throat> I put them on marketplace for five bucks a piece it's more than I'd get for scrap I, I do believe some guys say they sell them for ten for burn pits they also uh, make good raised beds so Look on Facebook, find your gardening groups. Now when I remove these pieces here, I'll, I'll try to do the two end screws first, and then do the middle one. Probably couldn't see what I was doing. Little lint, but I don't see no change. Okay, so now we're down to this point. Like that one. Sometimes that's kind of hard to air chisel that spot because it is double layer. So, here we go. Yeah, that's, that's sitting too stable. See, that makes pretty quick work of that. Now, of course, you don't have to tear them down like I do. So I take, like I said, I tear them down that far to conserve space on the trailer. Yeah, you, know, you, you just cut the wires out and go if you wanted to. Get out of the way, they got these little plastic tabs right here sticking through. I got corner cut to do here. Let me see. Do got a couple of bolts right there, so that might separate a lot of them. Pull these 
the bolts out and see what happens. Okay, I just, I think that just freed that up. Okay. Then we got a plastic thing here holding wire. I clip it. Cut this corner. element here. I'm done with the air chisel. Get it out, out of the way. Nice. Couple heavy wires here. Normally our motors and dryers are always aluminum windings. But you've got to decide for yourself, is it worth your time to tear them apart? I do. I tear them down.
Okay, now get that piece out of the way. Makes it a little easier to get to these two screws. seeing any change in this one. I guess I got short changed. A couple zip ties holding his wires. City here. trying to find them. <clears throat> but the only thing holding that motor now is probably that fan. Time what I do on them. Sometimes you can get lucky. Well, try to use what I got out here. Try to find a way to. But sometimes you can get in here. That's unscrewing. Now it's still turning back there. Sometimes you can hit these fans just unless I'm going the wrong way. But a lot of times I'll just end up trying to bust that fan up and then get in there with the impact. Not sure if you can see this up that high. Not really a lot to see anyway, but I'm just trying to break up this plastic fan in here where I can get to that to that nut. Okay, let's see what we got. 
cover here. That yeah, makes a bigger hole to get this out of. Looks like we got there's one more screw there to hold that's holding that plate on there. And two tabs. That one's round, so you can't get a hold of it with the. I put vice grips on that one. <laughs> and I don't remember what size that is, but uh, I'll worry about that when I turn that down. Anyway, that's it for that. <coughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Hope I wasn't too boring. Now I'll show you a little project I've been. I think it was the day before yesterday, the wife and I ran to, ran up to Perry, Oklahoma. And I picked up this little... Yeah, let me walk over here and turn this light on and see if that helps. It might help throw a little more light on it. It's a little Merc, Merc 39. Yeah, 3.9 horsepower. Yeah, throttle linkage and everything feels pretty good. It's not real stiff. And I greased it so it's turning pretty decent. It's got the original fuel fitting in it. There's a lot like that white one I've got in there. This is a, I believe, a 1966 model. Propeller and everything's good on it. <coughs> Did a compression test on it. Compression is like 90, 95 PSI. And did a spark test, and spark is weak. So it either needs points or a, uh, a coil. Now, look at one place on online, they wanted about 100. I think 180 for the coil, I think. But on eBay, I can get it for about 125. I can get a used one for about 45. So. I built this stand yesterday. Had, had the cart. Picked that up a scrap. Had it around a long time. I thought, I don't want to scrap it. I might find a use for it. So, I welded uh some angle iron at 32 inches, so I welded them on, didn't even cut it. But looking at it, I probably could have cut it down 2-3 inches. But it's not about work height. And I had to put two braces on there, welded them on. So it's a lot wider than what it needs to be, but if I get any uh, big motors, which I don't know if I want to do anything too big, because I'd have to wrestle them in here. Of course, I can always put them on the cart outside and maybe roll it in. But uh, 
there it is anyway so like I say 3.9 that's almost a four horse I figure if I get a little 12 foot John boat down the line next summer sometime that'd be a good little motor for it and uh, just curious to get it running and see how it does on that 14 footer yeah it's not going to go super fast but see how it pushes it then I've been busy also the last couple days working in this room put up some better better lighting put a little four foot LED there then I had that eight footer put it up and I put a lot of my empty buckets over here on this wall got my stainless steel in that one and this is some of my, my aluminum aluminum wire and I got die cast and zinc in that one but uh, I was checking out that other one I checked this one out and got good compression like 90 pounds in one cylinder and 95 in the other cylinder uh, bottom cylinder's got good spark top cylinder weak spark so that's telling me okay if I got good spark on one the points are good I probably have a bad coil so and of course the Nissan it runs it runs really good so this white one's a six, uh, 61 model six horse so probably what I'll be powering the boat with for a while I was trying to get that old 10 horse Johnson going and broke the pole rope yeah that black one came with a uh, three gallon gas tank too if you guys have ever priced these gas tanks they're about fifty dollars a piece so you might say I gave fifty dollars for the motor I ordered a book on it and uh, I went down today and got me a jet puller set so I can pull that top off and get down into the into the, where the coils and points are and that's my pressure gauge tester so I'll start doing a little work on outboard motors and see how I like it and see if I can flip them and make some money which what I've got right now I'll probably pretty well keep except that old Johnson out there of course I'd push that boat along real nice but I'm not sure I want to muscle muscle them around that, that much but uh, if I get it running good I might keep it but then I'm going to have to find another one to flip yeah, that's about a 56 model, I think. So yeah, it's a nice oldie. So I had it kind of running, but it was running rough, and then it died. So fuel line might have come off, because I know this fuel line was off. So got got some work to do on that one too. I got a look find a source for pull ropes so I'm thinking if I'm going to keep these others for myself I might go ahead and replace the fuel ropes while I got them here in the shop that way I don't have any issue with them out on the water but uh, anyway I want to thank everybody for watching hope you enjoyed the video uh, let me know if you'd like to see some uh, repair videos on these things that I go along Show you how to check the spark, check compression. Yeah, this will be be the first ones I've ever worked on, really. So, yeah, which I know this is kind of loose and sloppy. I, I don't think that's the right one. I think it should have kind of a rubber washer in there to tighten it up. So, I may have to order that too. Uh, I did notice a lot of the parts I, I can get on eBay and they're a lot cheaper. So, and this one and the white one, both of them take the same impeller to cool it and they take the same spark plugs. So, I did order some spark plugs. They got aftermarket impellers on that one site for $24, OEM for $32, but I can get them get them on uh, or eBay for eight so yeah okay I'm gonna 
go ahead and call this a video and then I'll get this stuff thrown cleaned up and uh, cut get them thicker wires out of there you can see how thick that one is compared to the rest and those I go I go ahead and keep them and I'll strip them so I've been just kind of cleaning up around here rearranging a little bit where I can you know make room for these motors Thing is, I had to go up Perry, Oklahoma, which is almost 100 miles one way. So that was a nice little road trip. There's another little five horsepower I saw in Marketplace right now. But uh, it's the other side of Tulsa, so that's <laughs> two and a half hour drive each way, something like that. So I'm not going to worry about that one right now. But I want to thank everybody for watching. and. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.